What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is going to be your review of Love & Hip Hop, Season 10, Episode 3. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. So, okay, you guys. So, this episode starts off with Chrissy and um, Cambella and Juju on this plane, right? They're on this plane, and they're doing this whole dramatic thing about Chrissy having to go talk to her investors about the whole foreclosure and all that good stuff. And she was like, you know, I invited, you know, Kimbella. Well, Kimbella wanted to come and then she invited Juju. And we all used to share a bond because, you know, we all used to be with dudes who were in Dipset. I think last week I said the diplomats. I meant Dipset. And um, Juju was like, I've been in real estate for the last 12 years. So for me, this is right up my alley. You know, I'm cool with Yandy. I don't have no beef with Chrissy. I'm not on anybody's side. I'm about making some money. Now, Here's what I thought was really hilarious about this whole scene. I thought they was flying to Miami, right? They went to Philadelphia. Do y'all understand that you could drive to Philadelphia in like 45 minutes from New York? Why are we flying? Y'all could have just got an Uber. I'm just saying. I... Anyway, neither here nor there, honey. Neither here nor there. They go down to Philadelphia, and while they're, you know, on the trip, of course, here go Kimbella carrying the bone back to Chrissy about what was said about the foreclosure. But Kimbella, you messy because you didn't say it right. See, words mean things. Words matter. You told Chrissy that Yandy was like, oh, they lost the house in 2010. Um, they lost the house because I wasn't managing Jim anymore. That's not what she said. And y'all know I hate defending Yandy because Yandy ain't my and she ain't my cup of tea. But that is not what Yandy said. What Yandy said was, that's around the time I stopped managing them. Now the implication was he ain't he couldn't manage his money because I wasn't his manager anymore. But that's not what she said. So we don't need to put words in her mouth. Yandy says enough on her own. She don't need no help. But neither here nor there, it was enough to put the battery in Chrissy's back. Y'all know. So Chrissy went and she had the conversation with the women. You know, they heard her out. She got very emotional. She started crying. She explained the situation. And at the end of the day, I definitely understand the concern because if I invested my money with her, I would probably feel the same way. Even though I, I explained to y'all last week how it really ain't as bad as it seems, but it's, it is what it is. But the women seem to be very open. They seem to be very... Um, they were very um, open to hearing what she had to say. And when it was all over said and done, they did embrace her sort of, you know, but like, we got it. We understand. Let's go make this money. Cool. So we see Pat Poos with a new artist, Pressure. Y'all know they always got to give us some new folk. His name is Pressure with an H. So his name, his name is spelled P-H-R-E-S-S-U-R-E, -S -S -E, whatever. Um, He's a rapper. He's... Been around for a minute. Him and Pat Poos hooked up. I think he did a song that had Cardi on it. And then I think he said that he remixed it. And when they did the remix, they put Remy on it, which is how he's connected to Pat Poos. We went all the way around Robin Hood's bond, but okay, we found the connection. Um, Drewski, y'all remember the guy Drewski who was on, on the show for like that one season with his crazy girlfriend? Um, you know, he still works at Hot 97. So they were on there. And, you know, that was just their way of introducing him to us. Um, he wants to start his own record label. He's doing big things, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Then we have Erica Mena and Safari. They are actually filming a video shoot that is going to be, I guess, the intro for their wedding or something dealing with their wedding. Something, I'm sure something real cute. Probably going to be some sort of intro to the, the reception or whatever. But I think that's a cute idea. And, the, you know, things are sort of, the tension is sort of high, whatever, because they still haven't really fleshed everything out from the whole, I want a prenup conversation. Um, Tahari comes around and talks to Erica about it. And Tahari was like, look, now I know I was the one that kind of told you that you should get a prenup. However, the way you presented it to Safari was kind of messed up. Like you kind of came at Safari out of left field with it. And that was wrong. Like what you want isn't a... Wanting a prenup isn't isn't a bad idea. The way you present it, wanting a prenup is the problem. And she was like, yeah, you're right. You know, I feel some kind of way about it. I really do feel bad because I could tell he was hurt. Like I could see it in his face. He was really hurt behind it. And I do feel bad about, you know, how I address the situation. Um, 
Then, you know, after Chrissy had the conversation, I'm going to just go ahead and get this out of the way. After Chrissy had the conversation with the women, she talked to Jim. And Jim's attitude was, you ain't owe them nothing. Like, all you had to tell them was, you hadn't been living in that house for three years and they had nothing to do with you. It was all on me. But like Chrissy was saying, they don't under, what, what, what you're not understanding is that as long as my name is connected to you, it's, it's not a good look. Now, the only way that would have been a, no connection is if you had said, we, you know, it, we had broken up. But other than that, I'm connected to you. You connected to me. It doesn't matter that I wasn't living in the house. My name was still all up on it. So my name going to be in the blogs just like yours. So, but y'all know Jim don't care. Jim don't, he don't get excited over nothing. He was just like, all right. I mean, we already talked about this. So, okay. Like his whole attitude was just whatever. Now, we saw a great scene. Let me say this. Mona. Mona. Somebody calls somebody that calls somebody that talks to Mona because I know Mona don't watch my reviews. But somebody calls somebody to call somebody to call somebody. Mona, this is what you need to do. You need to give Papoose his own black love talk show from a man's perspective. Let me tell you something. If Steve Harvey can become a millionaire telling women how to act like a lady, and y'all remember, I don't know if y'all remember when Tyrese and Reverend Run had that like talk show for one season on VH1 or MTV, whatever it was. If they can talk about love and relationships, Papoose can. Because Papoose is the black love whisperer up on this show. Now, Papoose talks to Safari, and they have a really good conversation. And he tells Safari, look, I told you this wasn't easy, man. I told you that marriage wasn't easy. He said, this is what you got to understand. These women are so broken by the time they get to us that they don't know how to handle a man that's giving it to them straight, that's showing them love, that's being sincere, that's 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 doing all the right things and have nothing but their best interest. They don't know how to handle it because they've never had that. He said, so here's what I keep trying to explain to you. This great that you want to get married and all that, but it ain't easy, bruh. She wants a prenup because she doesn't feel secure because men have always let her down. He said, and I'm telling you, you're going to have to just give it to her. You're going to just have to give her the prenup. And Safari was like, all right. He was like, because, you know, I love her more than, than this, than this piece of paper. I have no intention of, of cheating on her. I have no intention of doing her wrong. And at the end of the day, I, you know, when you put it like that, that makes sense. And you know what? It did make sense when he put it like that. I said, you know what, Papoose? You better break it down. So now we're introduced to another um, new artist. Um, she's a rapper. She started off as a video vixen, and she turned into a rapper. Jonathan met her on um, some sort of photo shoot or something like that. So he was doing her makeup. and um, he's introducing her to rich dollars or whatever. Um, and her name is J J Jenski, Jenski, whatever. It don't matter. We're never going to see her again. So anyway, and, um, basically pressure wants to sign her to his record label. He's known her for years and all of that. But she's like, I'm not really sure because all he keeps talking about is wanting to get me butt injections and get my breasts done and wanting to put me up in a whole, uh, an apartment or whatever. And Jonathan was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, put you up in an apartment. He said, see, all of that sound like um, side chick tease. Like, that's giving me side chick tease. That's not giving me artist development. You know, <laughs> like, what are we doing here? And she was like, yeah, I mean, I feel like that's, you know, I don't feel like he really... I'm not sure about his intentions. Like, I've known him for a long time, so I want to give him the benefit of the doubt, but I'm not really sure. So here come Rich Dollars. Rich Dollars was like, yeah, well, you know, I've been doing management. And, of course, he started throwing out all these names of people that he managed 20 years ago. He said, but, but you know, I sort of um, backed up off of it because, you know, I got this whole situation going on with my baby mom. Yeah, that's the reason. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. Um, but he ends up talking to her and she's like, you know, I, I really want management. I'm really trying to do that. I'm really trying to move in the right direction. I just want to make sure that I'm not, you know, that he's not setting me up, that he really is looking out for me. So she's going to have this showcase. Um, she invited, um, Rich Dollars to come because of course Rich Dollars was like, you know, yeah, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I think she, you know, 
set a rhyme right there on the spot, which, I mean, it was okay. And, um, you know, she was like, yeah, I really want to, you know, um, I want to try to, you know, um, um, get some management or whatever. So she invited Rich. And then we see later on when she goes out to dinner with Pressure. And Pressure, on one hand, I feel like, yeah, he's talking about getting her body done and all of that. But he tells her, he was like, look, you show me somebody who's in the game right now who hasn't had body work done. And she was like, yeah, but, you know, I just want my music to speak for itself. I don't need to get breast implants and getting butt injections or whatever. She was like, you know, yeah, I got an A cup, but I ain't never had a problem getting what I wanted. Like, I don't, that's not what I want. Like, I don't want to, that's not, you know, that's not the direction I really want to go in. And so she tells him about her showcase and she says, you know, I'm going to have a showcase and I'm inviting, you know, some other people. And he tells her rich dollars and, you know, of course he starts throwing the hate. I mean, Rich is old school, you know what I mean? But okay, you know, I see what she's doing. I see what she's doing, you know, okay, okay. But at the end of the day, like, I mean, she should want to weigh her options. And I don't, I can't say that either one of them are going to do what she needs, but it's nothing wrong with saying, look, I, I want to shop around and find the best deal for me and what I'm trying to do. So anyway, we're, and he has a girlfriend, his baby's moms, they've been together for 10 years, so... I already smell that that's going to be some issues, but we'll get to them later, I guess. Jonathan and Yandy. Now, Jonathan is having a fragrance launch. Him and Yandy hook up. They're getting their nails done or whatever. They're talking about Kim Bella and Kim Bella being messy. And why is Kim Bella riding so hard for Chrissy? Who, you know, last time we saw Kim Bella and Chrissy, she was flinging her across, you know, across the floor with a black eye showing all her, you know, her hoo-ha-ha to the world, you know, if they hadn't blacked it out, you know, and Yandy was like, I'm just not understanding, you know, I didn't say anything bad about Chrissy, I was just reading an article, it was the only thing that was out there in the news, you know, so they just having that conversation, and Jonathan's like, I'm cool with Chrissy, and I hope that Yandy isn't going back to, you know, um, I mean, I hope that um, Kim Bell is not going back to Chrissy misrepresenting how that conversation went down because nobody was dragging Chrissy. Nobody was talking shit. We were just talking about the facts as they were. Um, then we find out Jonathan is having a fragrance launch. He wants to invite everybody because he's cool with everybody. And, um, you know, he's been working on his own fragrance for a while. And, you know, he's so proud of it. That's what he's been wanting to do. You know, yada, 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 yada. So, Safari and Erica go to dinner. And basically, Safari tells Erica, look, I felt some kind of way about you wanting, you know, um, the prenup. But at the end of the day, I love you. You know, and they try to slide that stuff in there about Safari proposing to the girl down in Jamaica. They try to slide it over the Bahamas. They try to slide it in there. But at the end of the day, you know, I guess they're not going to really dig too deep into it. But he says, look, if you want a prenup, I'll, I'll sign it. She was like, for real? He was like, yeah, you know, I love you. I don't want no beef. Like, it, this is more important to me. And so then, of course, that made her say, well, I don't even know if I want a prenup now. I mean, the fact that you're willing to give me one lets me know, you know, how serious this is for you and how much it means to you. And I don't know if I want a prenup now. So now they're not going to get a prenup. I mean, I said last week, I don't know what Erica needs to bring up. I don't, I don't know. And nobody put it in my comments explaining, so y'all must not know either. Now, again, I have friends who have regular nine to five jobs who got prenups because they owned property or things of that nature before they got married. So, you know, I can respect that. I'm just saying. But anyway. All right, so we are at Jonathan's um, launch. Everybody's there, blah, blah, blah. Y'all know how it goes. Sin is there with Jonathan and Yandy, and they're talking about the whole, once again, the fact that Chrissy is probably going to be there and kind of rehashing that whole thing. Here comes Kimbella with Juju. Kimbella ends up getting into it with Jonathan and Yandy, basically saying, you know you were being messy. You said that they lost their house because you weren't managing him anymore. And Yandy was like, that's not what I said. That's not what I said. Kimbella was like, you brought it up and you started it. Kimbella was, and Yandy was like, I did not. And Sin was like, I brought it up. And that's true. Sin brought it up first. 
Yandy didn't bring it up. Now, Yandy pulled it up on her phone and started reading the article, but she did not bring up the subject. Um, so, Kimbella, like, you're looking real bad right now because you, it seems like you're creating a situation that doesn't need to be, like, you're, you're blowing it up more than it was. Like, the conversation did take place, but it's almost like you're blowing it up more than it needed to be blown up. But then here come Chrissy while they arguing. And Chrissy was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm here now. What's good? Like, I know y'all talking about me, so let's go ahead and talk about it. Now, Chrissy, I like you, Chrissy. I've been riding for you. And when people have been talking about you this last two weeks, about you coming back and you doing the most and you being extra, I was defending you, Chrissy. But in this moment, in this scene, at this time, you was doing too much. You were doing the most. Yandy was trying to let you know that she didn't have no beef with you, that she didn't have no problems with you. Yandy was trying to let you know that this was about Kimbella exaggerating, embellishing, lying about the situation. She said, I wasn't talking trash about you. I wasn't talking no mess about you. I didn't even bring it up. Chrissy starts talking about some, Yandy, you're going to stop talking to me like that. You're not going to disrespect me like that. You're going to watch your mouth or I'm going to fuck you up. And I'm like, Chrissy, you, that, that accelerated quickly. Because Yandy is trying to tell you, I, this ain't about you. I don't have no beef with you. I don't have no problems with you. What is? What are you doing? What is wrong with you? So anyway, that's where it ended. But Chrissy, you was doing the most. Like, you really let that thing exaggerate. I mean, like, escalate. And it really wasn't all that serious. Like, it just, it wasn't really that serious. But anyway, y'all, that's what it was. That's how it went down. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in them comments. Peace.